and this is a very powerful state of freedom, if you can disassociate from sensations, not from common sense, but from sensations. Because it's a total assumption that just because you observe a sensation, that it means that that has the shape of you, that you take on that shape, that's a complete assumption. That's a bondage, you don't have to give it. And it's the, it's the result of a lack of mindfulness, attentiveness, penetrative, direct awareness. It's the, completely the result of what you've been taught, completely the result of hearsay. Layers of assumptions and assumptions and assumptions create this contextual feeling of solidity, of heaviness. But you can go stand up against the wall and press your face into it, and none of that proves solidity pertaining to you. What is you? All you're observing is a sensation in the face. Even that's an assumption, but to keep it relational or relatable. So you can stand up against the wall and you can feel what you feel, but if you do it with mindfulness, aware of the fact that you're assuming that all of that means all kinds of things, and you kind of begin to dissect and identify those beliefs and assumptions, you can stand against that wall and have the same sensation but experience yourself as completely weightless and free and solidity as, as a complete abstraction, as a complete illusion, assumption. Nothing in that experience is evidence of solidity. Absolutely nothing. Solidity is a concept. But we've taken on this concept, we've integrated it in the back of our minds, and now everywhere we go, we feel like there's solidity to ourselves. This can be disassociated from or seen through or penetrated beyond or deconstructed or pulled apart or surrendered, however you want to say that. Does that make sense? Nothing like the sensations don't prove solidity. They're just sensations. You assume that that means solidity. Again, in the conventional realm, that's very useful knowledge. So you don't walk into a wall, but it has nothing to do with yourself. That's the assumption, that's the association you make on an automatic level that makes you then feel heavy, that makes you then believe you're tired, that makes you then believe you're having painful experiences, that makes you then believe that you're having happy experiences. None of, none of your sensations and everything can be reduced back to a sensation, essentially. Even a thought is a sense, a sensation, it's sensed. The whole universe is a sensation. But if you can realize that a sensation doesn't prove reality, doesn't prove anything, it's not evidence of a really independently existent object, that is an assumption. You're using all your senses combined and you're using what you've been taught and you're assuming, assuming, assuming away, and then you think that's reality. But it's not direct perception at all. It's not based on anything but hearsay. Even sensations are secondhand knowledge. The I am is primary knowledge. And the I am and the sensation are worlds apart. If you learn to, to understand it this way, if you learn to meditate on it this way, the I am, which is not a thing, it's not a sensation, it's the fact that you exist, the indisputable fact of your existence, it's the enabler of the sensation. Has the sensation affected the enabler of sensations? If so, you wouldn't be able to have the next sensation without some lingering effect of the previous sensation in the I am, distorting the I am. But the consciousness or the I am or the awareness is never affected or distorted by walking into a wall because you can walk into a wall two seconds later again. But the one walking into the wall two seconds ago is not the one that's walking into the wall now. So there is a timeless element here that's the background of experience that provides experience, that enables experience and it's this mystical yet crystal clear and indisputable fact of your consciousness, the beingness, which is the substratum of all sensations. But none of the sensations ever reach the I am, ever affect the I am. The I am continues, endures indefinitely so, fearlessly so, continuously so, without any stain. Sensations and thoughts and feelings, they're just like writing in air, writing your name in the sky. It leaves absolutely no trace. Like the flight path of a bird does not exist. 
so too your sensations no longer exist. Unless you're not mindful, and then all the backlog memory will produce a holographic projection of reality that can seem really, really dense, and really solid, and really painful, and really distant, and really that. And that's why we change so slowly also, because that backlog, out of a lack of attentiveness, an investigative, true observational inquiry, produces, the, it's the background, it's the subconscious, this is well studied too, it's the subconscious that produces our sense of reality. It's not actually what we're conscious of that produces our idea, our notion, our feeling of reality. It's the subconscious. And that's just a backlog of experiences and misinterpretations and lack of mindfulness. 